Jerusalem i khayala mi i londoloze u hambe nami zu ngishila na Jerusalem i khayala mi i londoloze Good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Kuneko Sellers Community All, All Hands event. I'm Yaliwe Soko, South African Ecosystem Lead at Sea Labs. And I am Pum Zagiani, who is your host today with Yaliwe and SA Silo Ambassador.
So today we're going to be looking at Seller's mission, and Seller's mission is to build a financial system that creates the conditions for prosperity for everyone. To support this mission, and we have to support this mission, we have this community, all hands to foster togetherness and strengthen the seller spirit. So this is a quarterly event which is hosted by South Africa this time, and it is purely about connecting communities across the globe. Each event will rotate the MCs, and this time around you are being hosted in South Africa, and we're happy to be here. It will be fun. We know that it will be fun. And just about the song, I think you may have heard the song. It is a song that we celebrate in South Africa because it is a song that originated at the time of uh, COVID, and it just had the sense of bringing about happiness to communities where people were just you know, thriving on dancing together, enjoying the song. It has just, it has just been a song that's been placed across the globe. Each Kuneko will center on one of our four community tenets. Today's theme is humility. So um, I'd like everyone in the, in the room today to really just type in the chat what humility means to you. We're waiting. You can use different languages. You can use different words. So I see Jackie says togetherness. And Kevin says selflessness. Trevor, modesty. The opposite of greed. Uh huh. Rodrigo says kindness. Angelica, community out. Be yourself. That's David Riasco. Wow, that is Kevin amazing. Says when others shine absolutely amazing it's amazing how this theme resonates with almost everyone and in a different way but similarly you know with similes in the spirit of starting with a gift the theme of today's gathering is humility and to celebrate the humility we are requesting all of the members today to really comp contribute to a cause of your calling it can be humanitarian empowerment fund or the stop tap stand or the crypto for black lives. So how you do it is use your Velora, and if you can use the barcode here to give to your gift to 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 your to your, um, to your cause of calling. So we we'll leave it here for you to just maybe make your gift using Velora, and then later it will come back again, and you can make your your gift. Thank you so much, Pumze. And I'm actually very excited about today's agenda. So here's what we have on the agenda for today. Opening up with a share about the spirit of seller, we'll have a special community greeting, followed by a series of community spotlights and learnings discussions. And then we'll complete with announcements. If you have any announcement you'd like to share with the community, please stick around so you can share at the end of the event. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And to start up the event, we will call up to the stage Taylor Leahy to tell us more about the spirit of Cello. Taylor, over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eliwe. Thank you, Fumza. Hi, my name is Taylor Leahy. I am a visual communicator working at C Labs, and I'll be sharing with you the spirit of Cello and my journey in finding it. I encourage everyone to settle in. I have a bit of a story to tell. And it starts here, the Curitiba bus token. This may be one story you've heard us tell in the ecosystem. It's actually one that we tell in C-Labs all the time. And it goes like this. In the 1970s, a city in Brazil called Curitiba experienced trash pollution from the rapidly growing city. The roads in these humbler neighborhoods were not wide enough for garbage trucks to pick up trash. And garbage accumulated in the land and the rivers, endangering the neighborhoods and the city's overall quality of life. Additionally, Curitiba had a bus system with extra capacity to offer, and the city decided to partner with the neighborhood leaders, and, uh, and they decided to trade bus tokens for collected trash. Community members earned value into existence by cleaning their neighborhoods and improving the quality of life throughout the city. They gained access to buses to seek new work opportunities, but also these bus tokens began organically circulating as money. They were essentially a secondary currency, and suddenly the neighborhoods had access to value to transact with and save. 
The story holds the concepts that inspire our work on Solo. Value that can be earned into existence and backed by underutilized resources. The tokens were issued independently alongside the federal currency, and they reduced the monetary system's structural dependence on debt. And that's where this story ends. And this is where I pick up the story. As a storyteller at C Labs, I became deeply curious with it. And without great technology, the, Cur the city of Curitiba happened upon, at the great technology at the time, uh, to, like that we have, um, had multiple opportunities. Uh, they, they stumbled into multiple features of money that we aspire to program uh, for Cello to have. So I pitched a research trip to take a small team focused on how the story unfolded and how Curitiba Bonas think of money today. We observed today's garbage exchange, met with the program manager, a city planner, and through interviews and conversations running around the city, we uncovered more depth and detail behind the story. We even spoke with people who use the bus tokens as currency during that time. And as I like cataloged all the societal good this Curitiba Waste Exchange created, through the supporting social infrastructure, these programs that the whole city um, believed in and also uh, that, that surrounded the waste exchange, um, I, I started thinking like, well, this was more than just financial, um, uh, more than a financial system that, that sprang up. It was, and all that came of it led me to believe that progressive thinking behind the infrastructure and the belief in human connection um, in Curitiba, set the fertile conditions for an unintentionally created secondary currency. And I saw that the city chose to engage with the neighborhoods by offering a gift of value, their own abundance in the, in the bus system, to co-creating an equitable solution, deciding to go into those neighborhoods and choosing to co-create um, what would help both parties. And then three, engaging in empowerment and sharing responsibility, like understanding that is, is a collective responsibility for the city's health. And I think behind all of this is sort of a spirit. It's a way of being. These intentions and actions that empower others to be agents of their own value is what I believe we need more in the ecosystem. Um, it's, it's a belief that, that, that there is hope in Cello and there is hope in cryptocurrency. And I refer to this as a spirit of Cello. The spirit is a gravity what attracts us to Cello and the belief that prosperity is sweeter together. It's a grace that reminds us that we bring the most value by serving those who need value most. And as we make good on our mission, I look forward to celebrating more projects that channel the spirit of Cello and tell new stories about prosperity. Now back to this, uh, this research trip of mine, what does an artist even deliver from a research trip? Um, that's a good question. I, uh, I think in, in uh, models and symbols and visualizations, and I just first started off with this question. What does it look like to experience an accessible value system suddenly emerge where value is needed? I started by making this sculpture. It was really uh, scrappy, it was a little prototype. I put, I cut out uh, shapes, that flipping in the middle is a solo, I'm sorry, the, the Curitiba bus token. I cut out forms that represented that core community from representatives, representatives of the city and the neighborhood leaders and then out spring from them was value. And I'm that figuratively were these petals that, that supported one another and arced back down into the ground. Um, space what would prosperity feel like if it were a space and under that would be the supporting community that inevitably would benefit from that abundance and then i drew i drew a lot a bunch of different forms i studied brazilian art um, and during my trip i even went to uh the moan which is a, a art museum in in um in Curitiba, and took a bunch of photos and learned from the art historians there I kind of landed on this analogy that the flower is a restorative financial system. The flower itself is the waste exchange, acting as an accessible source of value that's based on the well-being of the health of the environment and its habitants. Sort of the way flowers and, the na and nature plays in, in, in the real life. 
And the pollen and nectar at the center of the flower is the bus token, redeemable um, by the collection of trash by pollinators. And these pollinators are agents of collect collective prosperity. And uh, pollinators are just simply the neighborhood communities and the city. And, uh, and, and through, through that collection of trash, they're able to create value and circulate it around. And the, the inactive pollinators are just simply the people that um, are, are of the community that aren't pollinating. And they, but they will inevitably share the abundance of what the, the pollinators make. Now, the relationship between flowers and pollinators is interdependent. Their collective prosperity and evolution is in the hands of each other and how they continue to nourish one another. Flowers and pollinators have been sharing over 50 million years of coevolution. Their success of their evolutionary paths are merged by cleverly providing value to one another. So what if our relationship to cello was that of the pollinators' relationship to flowers? that through ongoing stewardship, we merge the evolutionary prosperity with the system that provides it for us. In other words, what if our experience with handling value and tending to our value system could be as delightful as a hummingbird helping a flower to reproduce by simply feeding from it? Is that something in our future? So this story and the symbol it is a symbol of collective prosperity through togetherness. And it's with great honor that I give to, to Koneko and the greater society. If this is your jam, I highly recommend going to solo.org slash flowers. With at there, at that site, there's just more. There's um, there's a beautiful written piece by my my friend Gabrielle Micheletti, um, my my other colleague, Aaron Derubo. Um, uh, and I designed the website and created it together. Uh, it's a big shout out to them um, and the collective experience we had uh, getting to think about these, these uh, ideas and what it means to work on Cello. And with that, I'll kick it over to Renee. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for sharing, Taylor. Um, exciting. Um, I'm uh, really excited right now to uh, announce the next speaker. Um, uh, Avicil Garg, who um, you know, I first uh, met when we, when Merrick Sepp and I first started thinking about uh, Cello, and it, you know, he is someone who really embodies today's theme, humility. He's someone who uh, is always looking out for for his friends, colleagues, for for people in his network, um, offering to help, uh, being humble, friendly along the way, but but bringing just a wealth of. Um, um, of experience, both as an entrepreneur, uh, starting two successful companies, um, spending spending time leading big teams at uh, companies like Facebook, um, giving back, being being part of the Y Combinator community, and mentoring uh, many startups, investing, advising, and uh, yeah, we've been um, just super excited to have him as one of the early backers initially, personally, and then later through his fund that he now runs uh, called Electric Capital, which um, has really become one of the um, best funds in the space, putting out amazing research. If you uh, if you haven't seen some of the research reports, I uh, highly encourage you to check those out. Um, and with that, hand it over to Avichel. Thanks for being here today. Thanks, Rene. Thanks for having me. Um, can you hear me? I... Yes. Awesome. Fantastic. Um, well, thank you so much for having me, uh, Rene. Thank you, Cello uh, community, for having me. Um, you know, I, I love this topic of humility, uh, and um, you know, it actually dovetails perfectly with the original reason that that I invested in Cello, which I think, um, you know, uh, the Renee Merrick Sepp, everybody just exudes humility, and I think that's really, really important in an entrepreneur. Um, uh, you know, I kind of zooming out a second. You know, Renee asked me to just say a few words about Cello more generally and kind of how we thought about it, um, uh, a bit from the investor side, and. Um, you know, I think when I when I think about all of the really amazing places that I've been fortunate to be a part of, and and the really big shifts um, in technology that I've been fortunate to be part of, whether it's Google or Facebook or uh, supersonic planes or genomics or self-driving cars or or crypto, these are all things that um, over the years I've I've been able to invest in or or work on companies in these spaces. Um, I think there are three things that have to come together. Uh, you know, I think there has to be some sort of fundamental behavior shift in the world that allows things to emerge that, that previously um, didn't exist. 
uh, there has to be technology that sits on top of these behavior shifts and allows these shifts to scale. Uh, and then there has to be a group of people who, you know, usually they spend years just toiling away in obscurity to, to build something that they believe in. Um, and all of these really big changes in, in the world and in society have these three things sort of as their foundation. And so if we look at them, you know, in the first one, what is this fundamental behavior shift that's happening? Um, and I think this is for a lot of people uh, top of mind lately is, you know, I think trust in institutions and society is at an all time low. As, I mean, we all, I think a lot of people have this intuition. Um, and there's a lot of data, unfortunately, to back it up. There's Pew and Gallup data, uh, which focuses, you know, a bit on, on American data, but um, these trends tend to hold globally. You know, only 30% of people trust banks. Um, you know, 30% of uh, people trust the government. 30% of people trust the press. Um, you know, 30% of Americans trust public schools. I mean, these, these are really sad numbers because that means 70% of people don't trust these institutions anymore. Um, and this is a global problem, right? And, um, and, and the very natural question I think to ask is, well, why is this? Why, what's going on? Um, and to me, I think one of the, the challenges here is that we created these institutions, these sort of fundamental building blocks of society. We created them after World War II, um, by and large, sort of in their, in their current form. Um, the current incarnation of them. And of course they've evolved over the last 50 to 70 years, um, but they were really designed for a world that made certain assumptions. And a lot of those assumptions um, don't hold anymore. And one of the fundamental assumptions was that we could trust these institutions. And as we've seen, because there's this, this shift in society away from trusting these institutions, um, the institutions have started to break and they've started to not be functional in the way that they had been in the past. Um, and so that I think brings you to the second point of, uh, of cello and why is cello fundamentally interesting and i think it's it's interesting because cello as a technology as a platform is a way for people to exchange value without necessarily having to go through these intermediaries and so if the thing that's changed in the world is that we no longer trust these intermediaries technology that allows people to connect directly and and not have to go through these intermediaries is a 2020s way of solving these problems these fundamental societal problems uh, where humans need to connect with each other and exchange value. And then those that that very fundamental primitive becomes, you know, a bank and it becomes a school and it becomes the press and it becomes, uh, you know, all these building blocks of society. Um, and we can now build them on on this new trestle, right? We can build them on this new, this framework. And so we can reimagine uh, a more trustworthy press. We can imagine more transparent uh, courts. We can imagine more accessible education. We can reimagine what banks might look like. Um, and we can do it uh, with 2020s technology and make it transparent and we can make it more accountable. We can build in um, respecting um, individual and minority rights from the very beginning. Uh, we can have them be private from the very beginning. Um, and that's a pretty fundamental uh, improvement, right? Just at the technology layer, um, which then brings you, I think, to this third component, which is which is the community of people that are actually gonna make this technology and bring it, uh, bring it to the world. Um, and, you know, to me, when you have entrepreneurs and community that sort of embrace technology and they see a, a set of problems and they're willing to invest time to try to solve those problems, you know, to me, that act is, is a fundamentally humble act. Uh, because when you're an entrepreneur, you actually have to believe in something much, much bigger than yourself. Um, you know, you have to be willing to be wrong. Uh, you have to be willing to be wrong for years sometimes. You have to be willing to have other people think that you're an idiot for years sometimes. Um, and so you can't have an ego, right? Uh, you can't you can't come from a place of having it be about yourself, because if you do, uh, you know, after six months, twelve months, eighteen months, you'll run out of steam. Uh, and so, you know, if it doesn't come from a place of humility, if it doesn't come from a place of wanting to create value for others, it's not sustainable, uh, and it'll fall apart. And that I think is one of the really unique things about about Cello and the Cello community is that the people that have come around the technology have that worldview. Um, and so, you know, I, I, to wrap it up, I, I'm, I'm extremely excited about Cello because it's got all three of the things that when you look at the history of technology, um, you know, whether it was PCs or mobile phones or the internet or, um, you know, go, go back, uh, you know, even, even to, uh, you know, things like uh, books and newspapers, like, you know, fun, fundamental things that really change society we had these three components, um, and Cello is one of the few places in the world right now that has all three of these. Um, 
And you know, when you have a, a community of humble entrepreneurs in particular, which I think is actually the hardest part, you know, technology doesn't is not a panacea. It can't solve all of our problems. So you have to build that community. Um, when that sort of uh, community of humble people comes together and tries to actually solve problems, uh, just amazing things can happen, and they can happen at mind blowing scale and with mind blowing speed. Right? It's just just remarkable what a, a community of people can build in five to ten years. Um, so, uh, you know, thank you for all the great work you're doing um, and, and thank you for having me um, and excited to be, be on board for uh, a very, very small part of this journey and, and get to watch all the great stuff that you, you're all building. Thank you so much for that insightful share, Avika. On next up, we have Merrick. Welcome to the stage. Thank you. Wow, really inspirational. Um, yeah, speaking of humble entrepreneurs, uh, it is my real great honor to welcome Matt and the entire team at Thesis to the Cello community uh, with today's announcement that TBTC will be coming to Cello. Woo! Uh, the bridge paves the way for um, the Bitcoin portion of the Cello reserve uh, to become fully programmatic. Uh, but more importantly, uh, we'll also let Celo users really easily hold Bitcoin on their mobile phones in a permissionless and non-custodial way. Uh, and so we're equally excited to be joining the Keep community. Uh, and with that, I'd love to hand it over to Matt, the CEO of Thesis, uh, to say some words. Welcome, Matt. Thank you so much for having me um, and appreciate the introduction, Merrick. Uh, so I'm going to let you guys know right up front that I am not the speaker that Avishal is. Um, but I did just want to share a little bit about my story and how TBTC got started and uh, and how excited we are to bring Bitcoin to Solo. Um, so I've been in this space for a while, um, 2013, 2014 Bitcoiner. But very quickly, like my interest in Bitcoin was stoked by needing access to the financial system. So as an entrepreneur, I, uh, I had built a service uh, that you guys might have heard of that's now called Fold, um, but it needed uh, payment processing. And because the business worked primarily um, with gift cards, uh, no one would process us. Uh, we were considered gray finance and we were off limits. Um, and so I found Bitcoin. And so uh, this was in the early days when people still thought like Bitcoin was going to be the only uh, entrant in this space. Um, since then, a lot of a lot has changed. Uh, twenty twenty especially has been quite a year. Um, but I think a lot of my thinking has evolved from Bitcoin maximalism to something I call monetary maximalism, which is that I think Bitcoin is a fantastic asset, um, but that I'm most excited about financial access as a human right. Um, and making sure that everyone can give access to their money without asking anyone else permission. Um, and so that is, I think, what I'm the most excited about with this work together with the Cello team, bringing um, Bitcoiners and Bitcoin as an option for the Cello Reserve, uh, letting Bitcoiners earn on the Cello platform, but then also bringing the Bitcoin to um, you know billions of smartphone users across the globe. Um, when we went to pick a new train after Ethereum, Solo was an obvious choice, not only from a tech perspective, which I can talk about for quite a while, um, but also for the values of the community. Uh, I got to say, I did not expect uh, this community call. Um, it, I'm, I'm just quite thrilled because uh, I, I thought I was just going to come on and, and give a, a pretty dry technical update, and I love to hear uh, talk of community values and and involvement. So we're just very excited um, and and uh, hope we can bring some Bitcoiners along for the ride um, to pursue Sell's mission. Amazing. Cool. Well, welcome. And we'll be, uh, and if you haven't joined Keep's uh, Discord channel, definitely highly recommend uh, joining that community as well.
Sorry, sorry about that. I was talking to myself. That is absolutely amazing. Welcome on board, Matt. And I like what you said because you said Selo was an obvious choice because of the values that they embody. That is so profound and so central to everything that Selo does. Well, up next, we would like to welcome to stage Tim Morton, who will tell us about the technical roadmap going ahead. Welcome, Tim. Thank you very much. Welcome, Matt. This is the part of the talk, which is the dry technical roadmap coming up. So um, I'm going to try and make sure <laughs> your need is fulfilled. Um, so welcome, everybody. I'm just going to recap a few highlights since the last Kineco three months ago, um, and then go on and talk about what we might see as the community, what we might see the community delivering um, during the next quarter. So. Um, yeah, the last Kuneko call feels like a, a long time ago now. Um, in fact, CUSD, the first of uh, Celo's algorithmic stable coins, had, had just been launched a, a couple of weeks earlier. Um, I'm delighted to say that since then, circulating supply has more than doubled to over 10 million. Um, and OKCoin became the first exchange to list the CUSD USD pair. Uh, and you know, as a reminder, CUSD is backed by a basket of crypto assets, including Celo, BTC, ETH, and Dai, currently valued at around two hundred and eighty million US dollars. Um, while the Celo is managed on chain, the other assets are currently managed off chain, and hopefully not for too much longer. And that is one of the reasons that I'm so excited about um, today's announcement. Um, there is also a new website where you can see a bunch more details about the reserve uh, that's available at celloreserve.org and I uh, encourage you to, to go take a look and follow some of the links and learn more. Um, so despite the modest liquidity, because you know we are still just starting out here, we've seen an incredibly strong peg to the value of the US dollar. Uh, you can see from this graph here that um, there have been very few deviations from, uh, from that value. And for me, this really sets CUSD up to be an asset that users feel they know and understand and trust, which is you know part of the main uh, rationale for allowing users to tran transact in, in, in a stable value currency. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so, of course, it was the last Kuneko at which C Labs unveiled Valora, their first wallet for the Celo ecosystem. Since that time, we launched the Valora beta and activated the waitlist, and we have been like, truly overwhelmed with the with the response and how much the app is being used uh, at such an incredibly early stage and in, in all places around the world so now we have over 1500 active weekly users and they they're using Valora from 46 different countries at the last time i checked uh, and it's humbling really to reach such a diverse audience so soon um, and even though this is a beta, users are already trusting Valora. You can see they're using it to hold over 12,000 CUSD and, and over 6,000 Celo. Uh, if you haven't already tried it, you should do so now. Uh, I noticed uh, the link was handily and conveniently posted in the chat just now. And I think uh, a bunch of invites went out to people's inboxes. So yeah, I definitely encourage you to follow that link and to donate to some of the uh, great organizations when the QR codes arrive back again at the end. Um, next slide, please. So yeah, this week has also seen uh, new releases of the software powering the Celo platform, uh, both Celo blockchain and uh, some of the Celo core contracts, which are the smart contracts that run on the blockchain. Um, so blockchain 1.1 includes a bunch of important bug fixes for users that the community have seen, um, as well as new uh, RPCs in preparation for future work on Plumo uh, and for full, full node incentives, new metrics for easier monitoring, uh, upstream mergers from Go Ethereum, obviously continue to be indebted to the Ethereum community for the, for the um, starting point that uh, that community provided Celo in this area. and as well as a, you know, a bunch of enhancements that improve the experience of uh, Valora users as well. So validators are already deploying uh, this on the back of a testnet, and if it, it all looks good, you can expect to see it on mainnet in a few weeks' time. So Celo Core Contract Release 1 includes, among other things, a new downtime slasher to protect the network in the event that a validator uh, was persistently down. Fortunately, right now, none are. <laughs> Uh, and also, um, you know, a new 
buy with limit operation for Celo's uh, built-in decentralized exchange. Um, there's forum posts, please check it out and, and check out the sort of schedule for the uh, governance proposals around that upgrade. In some ways, what's more important than the contents of these releases is the work that has gone into supporting a regular cadence of blockchain and smart contract upgrades. Upgrading smart contracts in particular is notoriously difficult. Um, a lot of tooling has been built by the team recently to enable those, uh, those, those upgrades to be done in a way which is audited, highly automated, um, and highly tested. At, from this point forward, I think you should be able to expect to see more frequent updates on a regular timetable um, going forward. Next slide, please. Ah, uh, and finally for Q3, um, I wanted to highlight the carbon offsetting fund. So in the spirit of humility, uh, of the way I think about this is of thinking deeply of the world and recognizing that we, the things we achieve as individuals are really um, things that we achieve as a much broader community. Uh, with every new block the Celo protocol produces, it, it actually allocates funds towards a carbon offsetting fund uh, managed, by our, managed by Project REN. So Celo has now, as a network, all of you together, all of us, have offset over 1,800 tonnes of CO2. Uh, and in fact, because of the increase in the, the value of Celo during this last period, that's actually, we've been able to offset um, a tonne more, in fact, many tonnes more than uh, we originally anticipated. In fact, that's more than five times the uh, overall emissions of the network that, that, that we've estimated. So it's equivalent to walking instead of driving for four and a half million miles, uh, which makes Celo absolutely carbon negative. And yeah, it, this is a, a great achievement. This is ongoing and um, really sort of highlights the place that we hope you, that the Celo network takes uh, in the world. There are many more details on the Project WEN web, website. Um, yeah, please, uh, please go and check that out. Okay, so looking forward to Q4, a major focus is general availability for Ballora, its full public launch. Um, there are a number of things that uh, need to happen before then. First, onboarding without an invite. New users, uh, through, through a new service, new users will no longer have to receive funds from an invite to cover the initial transaction and after station fees. Um, this is like a sort of one of those areas where like on the one side, the crypto world uses uh, transaction fees to, to avoid denial of service attacks but on the other side from the experience of a new user who really shouldn't have to understand the intricacies of gas and transaction fees um it uh, it there, there's definitely room to be uh, there's room for improvement in the experience and so there'll be a new series which a uh, new service sorry which will leverage meta transactions uh, sorry, and meta transaction wallets to fund these costs on behalf of new users, making uh, the ability to onboard without an invite uh, just 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 seamless. There'll also be more cash in and cash cash out options. There'll be more providers and better integration with exchanges. Um, there'll be a lot of improvements. Uh, that there already have been a lot of improvements and will continue to be um, uh, things done to uh, improve the verification experience and make it more reliable, no matter where you are in the world of whatever carrier you're on. Um, there's further work in refining how the wallet connects to the underlying blockchain so that transactions, exchanges, and so on are faster and more reliable, um, as well as like load time improved, especially on cellular networks. Um, you'll be able to see the names and profile photos of those you've transacted with, uh, and there'll be usability improvements around the account key and uh, recovery as well. So, that's the sort of theme for Valora users, um, but for developers, there are a number of significant improvements as well, making it easier overall to integrate with and build on Celo. Um, a lot of this is actually being driven by the new C-Labs developer experience team. They're in Discord on developer chat, and uh, they're also hosting regular office hours, so please do reach out. Um, if any of them are around, maybe they'll give a wave in the chat right now, but I'm not looking at the chat, so I can't tell. <laughs> if you're an exchange or payment provider, it will be, um, you know, in the, in the next month or two, it will be much easier to run full nodes. We're refreshing the documentation and there will be images available for uh, 
on public clouds, so including Azure, GCP, and AWS, to make it far, far quicker to just stand up a full node. If you're building dApps, there will be a um, there will be a, a number of DAP kit uh, bug fixes and improvements coming coming your way. Uh, there's a new deep links uh, spec for QR codes, which includes support for rest uh, requesting payments, um, and there is also uh, an expanded four node full node service. Uh, so the service has been expanded, uh, but to four data centers I think worldwide, um, which will reduce latency wherever your users are. Um, if you're building web-based applications, you can expect to see a mechanism to allow you to connect to and make transactions with Laura wallets, uh, which will enable, an, enable a sort of richer, a class of the sort of class of services that is much easier to deploy in a web-based um, sort of setting rather than as a as a DAP. Um, and yeah, uh, next slide, please. And so for validators and node operators, one theme for this quarter is um, allowing uh, you to support high availability uh, and at the same time making upgrades simpler, uh, de-risking the process of, of upgrading validators. So you can expect to see support for multiple proxy nodes, uh, which has been a long time coming, but is going to um, certainly improve the overall availability of the network uh, and increases resistance to distributed denial of service attacks um, and a mechanism for upgrading validators with zero downtime by switching the signing between two uh, different instances which will mean that you can upgrade to the latest releases with more confidence that if anything goes wrong you can continue signing <clears throat> um, you can uh, we, I hope we'll also be able to see a opt-in shared metrics and log service to help validators and node operators um, understand the behavior of the network and diagnose uh, any any issues that they're seeing more quickly. Um, so at the tail end of this, there'll also be the first sell hard fork, which will require a bunch of community coordination, I'm sure, and the details are um, still being discussed by um, by the community in terms of what exactly goes in there. But you can definitely expect to see uh, some pre-compiles which will facilitate uh, cross-chain uh, bridging efforts. So keep an eye on the community forums for more information on that. Um, and there was a little bit more I was going to say, if there's still time, maybe go back a slide, thank you, uh, towards new community run services. So um, there'll be a move towards further decentralization, I think, um, with services like Oracle's being able to be run by validators, a chance to get involved in the Plumo ceremony, uh, which will be starting probably next month. Um, and then after that, having full nodes and validators incentivized to generate proofs for Plumo. Uh, Plumo is the upcoming SNARK-based syncing protocol, which will uh, further reduce the time and bandwidth requirements for mobile devices to connect to the latest block of the blockchain um, and, and make that process near instant. Um, there'll also be incentives for full nodes to serve like clients such as the Laura Wallet users. Um, that's been a while coming, but there's um, uh, moves being made towards that. So. Thank you, next slide. Overall, it's, um, it's like an extremely exciting time for the project, um, but you know we are really only just getting started. Uh, I would love you to get involved, whether you are building a DAP to complement Ballora, whether you're uh, thinking about integrating another wallet into Celo, whether you want to contribute to Ballora itself or the Celo protocol, um, or whether you know, you're more on the operations side and are interested in running a validator or full node or in fact, as a cello holder, just voting for on-chain governance proposals. Um, this is your project. Please uh, join the cello Discord uh, at this address, get stuck in, feel free to reach out to people. And yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for the update team. And we've heard Tim, this is our project. Let us get involved. Next, we'd like to share some of the awesome projects around the world, starting with Yellow Card. 
Please welcome Sebastian, Product Marketing Manager at Yellowcard. Sebastian, welcome to the stage. Thanks so much for having me, Yelia. Um, uh, yes, and hello, everyone. So I, um, I work for Yellowcard. Uh, and we are a cryptocurrency exchange focused on the unbanked and underbanked across Africa. Um, we have started a recent project with Celo. Uh, we're partly funded by Celo um, through a recent seed fund. Thank you very much, guys. And we are now beginning a pilot project with Celo to fo focus on Stockfells. Um, Stockfells are community saving schemes in South Africa that have been a necessary mechanism for many people who have been forced out of the banked um, sort of community um, because of apartheid and stuff like that you know little little bits of white supremacy like that which means that uh, these mechanisms had to spring up across uh, Africa to support communities that weren't getting the support from governments and other systems uh, and what's what's been created are some really really powerful tools I mean some of the facts around it are that, that roughly 85 percent of Africans still live predominantly in the cash economy um, with uh, a huge percentage, so 70% of Africans considered fully unbanked, um, which is absolutely remarkable. 850 million people um, no, with no access to banking. But it's also a good thing. Uh, if we look at the history of Africa, the, the, the role of institutions has often been to restrict the access of the the, the majority of people uh, to things like power um, and power is often wielded through money. So, so as those banking mechanisms have restricted African access, they've also made sure that there is no preconceived ideas about how banking can happen, that there, are, there is no kind of um, forced understanding for how banking can exist in these communities. And this is really where our opportunity comes in to show that banking can be a lot of different things and doesn't have to be through traditional means. Um, and that's really where this plan came along. Could we go to the next slide? Awesome. So the lack of financial infrastructure, even power infrastructure, can sometimes make using banking mechanisms really hard. Um, I've been sort of using Bitcoin for, for years and years and years. And often in cities, it's really easy to sort of pull out a pull out your phone and scan a QR code uh, and, and make a purchase. But at the same time, when you're dealing with um, communities that don't always have those resources, uh, for, often for them, having access to sort of alternative financial mechanisms is almost impossible. Um, also, with Africa, we have the problem of our borders. These aren't borders designed to surround people and 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 hold communities in but we're rather drawn up in 1886 by a bunch of people who really weren't african to divide communities and divide people across borders so the need for a borderless ability to transfer money um, in africa and a way for people who have been part of the vast diasporas of africa to communicate financially with their families is really really important alongside the importance of sort of low costs which currently cripple many people and that's really where yellow card started our founder walked into a bank in um in atlanta and uh and he met a nigerian man there who was sending 200 dollars home uh, and was having to pay 90 dollars of that in fees this is obviously the sort of thing that that like makes my blood boil probably makes everyone on this call's blood boil but also shows how how the the, the levers of power really stacked against those in the bottom and most of those in the bottom are in africa uh, the UN uh, CHR released a report today saying that Africa is a net a net creditor to the world based on how much illegal sort of outflows of our capital leave the continent in in terms of um, cash through things like FinCEN or through through um, minerals and stuff. So having these these facilities for ordinary Africans to be able to claw back some of that value being lost in their world is really really important. So that brings us to this cello pilot and what we're doing. Um, and we're using Stockfells, which are these community saving schemes, is the best way to start because they often have multiple people in charge of that, of that savings community. And things like multi-sig wallets make it really, really easy for us to be able to um, enact those sorts of trust mechanisms within these community saving schemes. Now, at the moment, Stockfells are used by communities to save together, to provide a collective bargaining and saving mechanism and to, to provide tools so that if someone's going hungry this week, um, the community can step in and pay their bills. If someone dies, funeral saving schemes can then provide for that, that uh, unexpected cost. Um, or medical expenses that are faced by the community are often supported collectively. 
And so it really fits already into what uh, blockchain provides. Um, and this project aims to show these communities how we can do that by using um, CUS CUSD uh, and, uh, uh, and the various sort of tools of a blockchain uh, as a mirror to the current cash economy that they're running. So that they can see with practical application every day how um, CUSD can provide a much better alternative than cash under their mattress. Uh, also, by using things that we we have a standard in our in our exchange, things like multi-factor authentication, uh, strong KYC, um, and things like multi-sig, allow us to um, provide a very safe mechanism for communities to be able to trade, so that people aren't carrying cash around, and that uh, transactions can happen instantaneously, but without much of the risk of sort of stuffing your cash in your bra or whatever people have to do at present. Um, and so, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's really the, the kind of the goal of this project. How are we going to go forward with it? Well, next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, one of the keys is to, to explain to our community the real value that they can, they can find when switching out of uh, local fiat currencies. And this graph here just shows you the, the ZAR to USD exchange rate over the last 10 years. That's a real reduction of about almost half in the amount of money in South Africans' pockets. Um, and bear in mind, we're one of the richest countries in the world in terms of resources, but you wouldn't know it to look at our population. Our salaries decrease every year. Uh, the amount of money in our pockets goes down and down no matter what we do to try and keep it up. So by allowing and teaching these communities about how they can use, for example, seller dollars it, and uh, crypto exchanges to hedge against the uncertainty of um, of fiat depreciation is a really important tool to bring that value back into these communities and to show on a monthly basis how their money can grow um, by removing it from the fiat system. Uh, and at the same time, we aim that this, the, this pilot project allows us to effectively communicate the benefits uh, in a real world way. So look at what the money you put in at the beginning of a month, look at how it really grows until the end of the month and then, and then value that, you know, once, in 2016, I went out to a bar in Cape Town that um, that takes crypto, it takes Bitcoin, and I bought 300 rands worth of drinks. The other day, that 28,000 rands worth of loss to me was just really, really sore. And I thought if I just saved that 300 rand back then, I'd be way richer than I am right now. Um, and, and so those sorts of lessons, I think, learned on a larger scale by seeing the real world growth in your assets, if you just leave it in crypto, uh, can be a really, really powerful incentive for people to step outside the traditional system and trust in something that doesn't have the same borders that are currently put around them right now. And at the same time, in this stock fell, we want to look at traders and vendors to make sure that there are real world utilitarian applications for for cryptocurrency where kids can go into a shop and buy sweets with with crypto uh, in a very easy and, and safe way. Uh, and this this sort of uh, utilitarian use within these communities will drive home um, both for for them how they can use our technology but also, will also provide us with vast educational resources to learn how we can do it better in the future how we can how we can bring people across to magic internet money in a very very uh, easy and pain free way and how we can take that trust element the the real um the value that that comes from knowing your things are cryptographically secured um and and impart that sort of knowledge to people who at the moment literally have have to store their money under uh, under their mattress often just yeah. to make sure that it's safe. So um, yeah, so that's that slide. And next, uh, please. Oh yes, um, so these are just some of the ways that we're going to do things. Again, focus on multi-signature wallets that allow, that allow multiple people in the community to be able to, um, to uh, monitor and control how funds are spent and to have good checks and balances so that uh, no one is able to just access the money and withdraw it uh, singularly. Also, the zero price risk. By showing people how their money can grow and by showing how it can grow outside of fiat, we can really bring home a way that wealth can be created in communities, collective wealth can be created in communities where currently they are normally the victim of predatory banking rather than the beneficiaries of, it, of 
sort of these amazing sort of um, growth and growth in their wealth. And then there's things like multi-factor authentication, making sure that uh, our customers, however they use, however they want to access their crypto, uh, they have a safe and secure way of doing it. And that if they are not the person there making that transaction, um, that their their funds are protected from sort of predators out there in, in communities who often take advantage of, of those, um, uh, those members of the community when they have that money in their hand. Making sure they don't have that money in their, way, in their hand makes their life a lot safer. So yeah, um, we're going to focus on communities around core urban areas in Johannesburg, Durban and Cape Town, specifically underbanked uh, peri-urban regions around Joburg, Durban and Cape Town. We're going to introduce uh, Celo dollars to mirror the existing trading mechanisms, to compare to current methods of payment and show them the ways that they can benefit from switching to our magic internet money. And they can prove we can prove the efficacy of safe and secure mobile tools to replace the under the mattress savings that they currently use with very simple education and evangelism of what crypto can do for them all under the auspices of small, very, very tightly controlled um, pilot projects so that we can check uh, at every stage that we're doing the right thing by the communities we're serving. And that's a little insight into the project. Hope you guys like it. Wow, that is so amazing, Sebastian. Thank you very much for those insights. You know, I'm particularly very interested on this one because it responds to a real social issue, especially in South Africa. And you know, stock files are normally run by women and women who are taking care of their family and the extended families and everyone else. So I'm very excited to see this one and I wish you all the success in the POC. Thank you so much. We're very excited too. Thank you very much. And up next, we bring yet another exciting project and we're calling up to the stage both Gigi as well as William Le, who are from the Grameen Foundation, and they will have to tell us in, a little bit about the exciting stuff they're doing with Grameen. Hello, everyone. Just a sound check. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Gigi. Excellent. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, my name is Gigi and I'm from Grameen Foundation, a nonprofit organization based in the US. Our work in Grameen is rooted in the microfinance movement that was started by Professor Yunus of Bangladesh. Since our inception, we have supported microfinance institutions globally in the provision of their services, most of whom are serving women. Thank you for allowing me to share the story of our collaboration with C-Labs and other partners today. So we will just go through a, a storyline, if I may say, uh, and if you can just follow the slides. So we have on the leftmost uh, Lourdes. Lourdes is a micro entrepreneur in rural Philippines. She's also a microfinance member. Her small store is capitalized using microloans and has been in operation for about 10 years. But when COVID-19 struck, she was forced to close down her store since she wasn't able to source goods and her working capital had to be used for family necessities. Her family is composed of five people with two elderly people in her household in addition. So we worked with the microfinance institution to identify members like Lourdes who would benefit most from a $100 unconditional relief. To do this, we worked with C-Labs to operationalize a fund transfer using the Valora wallet. Lourdes was assisted in downloading her app and activating it. A 100 CUSD credit was disbursed through her wallet. And with this, she was able to buy groceries, pharmaceutical items, provisions for her family, and some items that she was actually able to resell through her store. As of September 25, we have disbursed about 23,000 CUSD in value to about 228 beneficiaries. So more to come, a lot more work to be done, out of which about 18,000 CUSD was already transact transacted. Next slide, please. So this story seems very straightforward, but the backstage was definitely not. It required very close collaboration of nine organizations, 
each playing a critical role to make it happen. As most of you know, this is not a simple wire transfer operation. It required converting Grameen's financial assets to CUSD, having a custodian, training and gaining the trust of the MFIs who have never uh, you know, been through this path before, operating a call center for supporting client validation processes, addressing queries of beneficiaries, engaging them so that they can trust the channel, designing dashboards, working with a local merchant processor. In Grameen, we were very humbled by the amount of talent and resources these partners have given to make this happen and how everybody had to be very agile and understanding of each other's capacities and needs. No one said, I can't do this or you should do that. Everybody was just willing to lend a hand. So at this point, I'd like to turn this over to Will to share more about our journey. Will, over to you, please. Thank you, Gigi. Uh, and thank you for Grameen's partnership throughout this process. We're happy to go on this journey together. Um, so as Gigi alluded to, there were a lot of cost and, uh, and effort put into starting up the system. And so you might wonder, what is the, the, the point, right? Uh, well, we believe that despite some of the initial startup costs, the long-term benefits of using cello technology for humanitarian aid are extremely, extremely powerful. Um, here are some of them. So first is uh, transparency. And so I used to work in an aid program uh, delivering cash transfers in Kenya. And uh, so I know one of the biggest problems of uh, distributing aid has always been um, concerns around fraud or graft or lost funds. With cello technology, we have an unprecedented level of transparency. Um, so the team working at C-Labs and Kiko together have created dashboards that not only let uh, the Grameen Foundation send transfers to beneficiaries, uh, but it allows them to monitor transactions in real time. So this means that um, any person can look at uh, the dashboard and see who has received funds when, who has spent their balances, um, and we can also look at any sort of suspicious activity that is flagged. Um, another major benefit is cost savings. And so uh, the globally, the average cost of a remittance uh, across borders is around 7%. And given that each transaction uh, or aid package to a beneficiary was around $100, that could be on average $7. Um, however, the each transaction cost here using the Cello platform was less than a penny. So that is a massive reduction in fees. Uh, on top of that, uh, not to add to the, some of the challenges around this project, this was a COVID relief project. And so there were lots of uh, uh, updates in to the restrictions that we had throughout the process, right? Um, Manila and Cebu, the two areas we worked in, were going in and out of lockdown throughout the process. And so we recognized that we needed to have a solution that could be delivered primarily digitally and virtually. And so um, what's great about Valora and the Cella protocol was uh, with just a 20 minute phone call to each beneficiary, despite the fact that many of these um, entrepreneurs had never downloaded an app before, they were able to download Valora, get trained, um, and then use the Valora app to purchase goods through a microsite uh, that was built by our partner Beam & Go uh, to get goods either in store or delivered to them, depending on their choosing. Um, and the last highlight uh, value that I wanted to highlight was around efficiency. So obviously with humanitarian aid, timing is of the essence, and so, uh, what is great about this is each transaction takes about 10 seconds to complete, uh, and the entire transfer process could be done with under an hour. Um, and so uh, we're really excited about this. Uh, the fact is this is just V1 of a project. And so um, in the spirit of humility, there are a lot of things that we can do better, but we're really excited about the potential and the promise of using cell technology to really revolutionize how humanitarian aid is done. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, and so uh, speaking to the spirit of humility, um, there are lots of lessons that we learned throughout this project, things that we would do a little bit different later. Um, the first is around investing in capacity building. We recognize uh, that th there are a lot of new concepts that we introduced, like custody exchanges, key management. And while Grameen was a fantastic partner throughout this process, there are, uh, we often took for granted the amount of uh, knowledge and education that needed to be uh, performed to bring folks along. 
And so in the future, investing heavily upfront, I think will make the process a lot smoother. Um, flexibility is key. I cannot tell you the amount of times that we had to change our plans throughout this process because of uh, different changes in restrictions or lockdown or um, so, uh, issues with the data. But uh, I think being flexible and being really uh, humble and nimble, I think is, is very crucial. Um, and the last kind of like lesson learned that we will take to heart is offering multiple support channels, right? So I can't emphasize enough how new this technology was for many of the entrepreneurs. Um, and uh, in order to kind of build trust in the system and build familiarity, um, we recognized that it was important to leverage all the support channels that we could offer. And so we used the MFIs, we had a call center set up, um, we used systems that were familiar to them like Facebook and text. Um, and we also tried to make sure that uh, we were going to where they were. So a lot of, uh, of the beneficiaries were talking to each other. And so it was important for us to make information digestible and shareable so that um, they could leverage the social support systems in their communities already. Um, yeah, I think in general, this project we're really excited about. Um, the last transfers for on the Celo cohort literally went out 30 minutes ago. And so this is, uh, you, you all are getting a very sneak peek of the results so far. In terms of next steps over the following weeks, we're hoping to kind of uh, wind down the project um, and collect more information and research. And toward the end of the month, we hope to share more information and a report. So please stay tuned for more information. Thank you so much, Will and Gigi. We have just experienced togetherness, humility, the spirit of giving in one presentation. Um, next up, we have Sean Yu from MagoPay. Welcome, Sean. Hi, Yellow. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here with you. So my name is Sean. I'm co-founder of MagoPay. So today I'm going to share uh, a little bit about the progress as part of the Celo community. As we all know, the Celo's mission is to build a financial system that creates a condition of prosperity for everyone. And we share the same mission. And right now we are building on top of this Celo financial system and we are making crypto payment easy. So to illustrate this today, I'm going to talk a little bit about Alex. Alex is a senior student in China, and he's applying for the university in the United States. He's preparing for the English exam, of also known as TOEFL. He wants to practice the oral speaking with the native speaker in US. He finds a good teacher on five.com. The price is acceptable, which cost him 120 bucks for six lessons. But the problem is, the five.com only supports credit card or PayPal. But sadly, Alex does not have a Visa credit card, nor PayPal. So as a result, the sad truth is, Alex chooses an English teacher in China rather than a native speaker in US. We see so many people like Alex time and time again, because the current payment flow is broken. The traditional payment gateways like uh, Master and Visa, they are building on the bank network to facilitate transactions. Uh, can we see? Yes. Um, so this, um, so the traditional payment gateways, uh, just like the Visa and credit card, they are based on the bank system. But in the Southeast Asia, seven out of ten adults they are unbanked or underbanked because of the hurdles to set up a bank account. So the first thing, uh, so for example, if we want to set up a bank account in, S in the Southeast Asia, uh, we need to have a valid identities. But you, you can hardly imagine how complicated it is for the identities in Asia. We usually, some countries may have 10 IDs. So it's very complicated for these identity documents. And also the second part is it's lack of the courage. So think of um, the bank uh, branches. That's most of the bank networks. They are centralized in the tier one or tier two cities. But think of the urbanization rate of some countries like the Vietnam. It's only 35%, which means uh, two thirds of the population, they are far away from the bank uh, 
the banking networks. To be worse, in order to open a bank account, they need to have the high initial deposits with no incentives. So which makes this process so complicated. But now with the solution of Celo, we have totally a different story. Using the power of Celo network, the payment can be easy and cost effective because it's a peer-to-peer -peer payment with no middleman in between. And also the features about the Celo. The first one is the mobile first. Uh, anyone with their mobile phone and internet access will have the financial services so that which empowers billions of the mobile phone users to have this financial service right away. And also the second part is the money on sending on the Valora or the CUSD is instant and borderless. So now Alex can pay for his TOEFL class with, uh, within a few seconds. Maybe uh, let's see the demo of how it works right now. So this is the process uh, of how to pay using your Valora app, and you can pay the CSD right away. So uh, we can browse the online merchant, and we can click any uh, service right now. So we can add uh, whatever we have, and then it uh, is the video playing. So uh, we can uh, click anything. Uh, so that uh, once we check out, so that we can have the QR code. We can either scan the QR code with Valora app because they have the QR code spec, or they can just click directly and it will pop up the Valora app right now. Yes. So as we can see, this uh, whole payment process just take less than five seconds or uh, less than 10 seconds with a very, very low cost fee. Uh, and also the whole transactions is actually taking place on the mainnet. Uh, this is, you can hardly imagine that you can have the same experience just like the <coughs> PayPal or just like Alipay. But all these transactions, they are com they are, you can see all the transactions on the mainnet. Th that's so, the magic is so cool. And also one thing to mention, the cost is so, uh, user friendly. It's just less, far more less than one cent. So uh, this is a, a so powerful tool. And also another feature I want to mention here is, uh, but most people cannot see that inside is that all this gas fee you are paying, you can pay directly using the cello dollars. So which is so complicated comparing with what we have right now on the Ethereum network. For example, if on Ethereum network, you want to pay your USDT or USDC, you need to pay the gas fee in, in Ether, so which is so um, annoying experience. But now using the CUSD, you can have, using the Valora app, you, can, you don't need to worry anything about this. It's enabled so simple, simple user experience. So now, um, if you want to start uh, spending your CUSD or uh, you can have a Valora app. And if you are merchants, we are here to help. So please uh, do send us an email at business at .com so that we can help you to set up, uh, start accepting the cell uh, dollars right now. And also, uh, we are uh, small business friendly. And if you are specifically, if you fail to apply for a Stripe account, or if you are selling to China or Singapore, you don't need a local bank account in China or in Singapore. And what we do is we will help you set up everything and you will get settled in the CUSD in your Valora app. Yes. So last but not least, it's a cooperation uh, of the Celo community. So um, it's the beauty, uh, as Sochi just mentioned, it's a beauty and impact of the aliens for prosperity. So um, for this project, many thanks to the C-Labs team. Uh, Connor and Josh help a lot on the technical side, and uh, Dennis help us a lot on the Valora setup. And also thank, great thanks for Ivan and Sochi for the hands-on uh, uh, guide uh, for this whole process to make it work. And also uh, uh, great thanks for the uh, upright. Uh, during the solo camp, we get through all the process here and OKCoin okay for the fiat on round changes. 
And also we are cooperating with more fellow alliances and partners together to support more and more countries and helping more people to start accepting the fellow dollars. Yeah, and that's the story. So hope Alex can pay easily right now using the Valora app and pay the USD. And thank you very much. I'm going to uh, hand off the microphone back to Yaliwei and Hamza. Wow, thank you very much, Sean. That was so understandable, so clear and succinct. I love how you've done it, that you have done it with a customer in mind. It's like you're mapping out what that customer journey would be like. Well, today is not about you, but it is about the community. And at this point, we'd like to call back all the presenters of the community highlights back to stage. And we'd like to hand it back to you, the community. Ask us any questions that you'd like to ask from the panel that is just presented. So outside of that, Sean, there's just excitement about what you've just presented. Everyone is excited that it's so simple and you've made it so easy. So Gigi, do come back and um, Sebastian as well, if you can come back to the stage, we'll take a few, a few questions from the community. Okay, we have everyone, Sebastian. Wonderful. So I become your spokesperson now. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask, the team, please post them on the chat. Um, and also, I will, I'll read the comments, guys, because they are coming up. Everyone is excited. You've created the energy in the room. And, uh, okay, Nitya is saying magic with my little play. Julian is saying so beautiful how much that aligns with our value of connectedness. And there's Hank it say, who says it opens all possibilities. I encourage anyone, if you have any questions about these POCs, you'd like to know more, you'd like to connect, uh, we welcome, it's, 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 it's your time now. Uh, Vanessa is making an announcement in the midst of I think we lost Pumza, but there's a question from Tim. Um, I'm not sure if it's directed towards MagoPay, but the question is, what's mi what missing technical feature would have made your projects easier? Sean, would you like to yeah. take that one? Sure, uh, I will take this one. So maybe uh, one thing when I was developing on the Valora, so maybe one thing is uh, about the QR code spec. So, uh, uh, I do not find too much document online, so I asked Ivan for some help on that. So uh, maybe one good thing to have is maybe well some documented about the uh, some documented about the QR code uh, spec. That would be uh, better. Yeah, but I think uh, for, it's at early stage, and I would uh, also help uh, if I can help. I can. I would like to contribute to the some documentation on that too. Thank you so much, Sean. The question is actually for everyone. Um, Will, would you like to go next? What missing technical feature would have made your projects easier? It's a question yeah. from team. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think that there are uh, some aspects of the integration um, where uh, our partner Beam and Go uh, in accepting CUSD for uh, their uh, purchases of items, um, having a tighter integration loop, some more developer tools there could have been um, really nice. Thank you, Will. Over to you, Sebastian. Hi. Uh, yes, could you repeat that? Sorry, I, you cut out for a moment there. What was the question, please? The question is, what missing technical feature would have made your projects easier? Well, at the moment, we are, we're a functioning um, exchange that's operating across Africa, and, and uh, I don't think at the moment we have many technical issues that are uh, holding us back. What the biggest one that sits at the junction with banking and across Africa, banking is a very um, 
manual affair, uh, often paper and no internet banking. And so often when we're validating transactions across, across the continent, when we're bringing cash on and off, just, uh, there is a storm in Cape Town right now and the door I'm with is it's ripped the lock out. So I'm holding it shut so that the entire room doesn't blow out into, into, into there. So sorry about that. Yeah, whew, that was scary. Um, yeah, so technically we don't have many problems at the moment. The main problem is with goodwill in Africa. Um, one big issue, and uh, Yeliwe can attest to this, is that we have to deal with things like um, central banks talking about cryptocurrency in a very dirty way. And that's because it's often tr uh, um, a lot of scams use cryptocurrency as the, as the kind of um, uh, hook to get people hooked into these big uh, scams. So we deal with uh, like that a lot, trying to break the cycle of bad education around crypto uh, and teach even legislators that there can be safe, secure, easy and transparent ways of, of, of transacting and that these don't have to be a threat within a country but can actually be a, a, a real benefit to the people who need it the most. Um, and that's the thing, I think a network like this, uh, we, need the, we need the most action, action in, in working together to, to break down some of these like really bad um, preconceived ideas about what crypto can be and to help governments establish really good thinking about how um, crypto can save Africa uh, and many parts of the developing world from the, the trap they found themselves in. I don't know if anyone read the uh, UNCTA, um, the, sorry, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. They did an economic development in Africa report today. It uh, came out recently. And it says that Africa is a net creditor to the world because of the outflows of, of money through um, uh, commodities mostly, uh, but also cash. Uh, and so we need to help stem this tide and the way to do it is through a distributed transparent and safe way that people can communicate and transact with each other and that's what seller represents so for humility for me is us doing it for all of those people who aren't represented by these billions of dollars leaving uh, and who need a little bit bit of it back thank, thank you, you so much for that sebastian um there is a question for gigi um and it's from victor graf what are your thoughts about the use of CUSD for aid distribution going forward? What are the most important areas for improvement? Over to you, Gigi. Yes, thank you so much for that question. Um, so one of the things that we need to do, you know, after the pilot is actually develop a business case. And that is something that is very important in um, pilots such as this to inform us what is really the cost. Uh, of delivering the whole um, aid distribution. Uh, but more than, uh, more than that, I think um, there are a lot of challenges in terms of education, you know, which is also going to hit the question of Denise. Uh, education was very important, you know, in especially within Grameen Foundation ourselves. <laughs> You know, there were was a lot of, uh, you know, challenges in terms of legal, you know, legal uh, processes, uh, all the uh, memorandum of understanding, you know, everything down, uh, you know, uh, to the review of our legal teams, aligning on the jargons, you know, educating everyone on what are the risks involved in the project, you know, especially on transparency, data security, um, also, of course, losing, uh, you know, losing value of, of the, um, of the uh, aid or, or the relief fund. Uh, so a lot of those had to be internal education, if I may put it that way. Um, surprisingly so, the education in terms of the end user was actually very much, uh, uh, help by the call center and so that initiative was actually easier than uh, educating the institutions like the MFIs and ourselves uh, to, to be able to be comfortable you know with this type of approach 
and within Grameen Foundation, you know, everyone was asking me, hey, Gigi, why did you decide to go this route? Why don't we just give manual vouchers, you know, so they can go to the grocery stores and just use those vouchers. And, you know, that pushback that we had to do, no, no, we have to do it this way because we have to prove a point, you know, and we have to use something that, you know, we have to finally get, you know, a solution that will be able to scale moving forward. And we are not just talking about this pilot itself. We are talking about, you know, being able to ripple it across every other, you know, um, relief distribution moving forward. So there are a lot of uh, important areas for improvement. And uh, we've been talking about that. Uh, Will had alluded to it. It's really, you know, about a lot of the technical alignment with our partners, local partners, very important. Uh, the tech, uh, being able to support that technical uh, infrastructure, building the technical infrastructure with them. Um, again, you know, all the legal, uh, you know, uh, jargon that we have to go through. And of course, to me, what's important is being able to use you know the wallets moving forward the merchant wallets moving forward that's very important you know to to be able to move it that way yeah uh, just to quickly add on that point uh, i agree with everything gg said um, and i think valora was a great tool for those who had smartphones but in the spirit of humility if we really want to double down on humanitarian aid i think exploring options for those who may not have smartphones could be a direction that would help scale the USD adoption for humanitarian aid further. Thank you so much for that, Will. And uh, in the absence of time, we'd like to move on to our next item. Uh, there's still more questions in the chat. So to our speakers, please take a look at the questions and um, uh, answer our audience. And we'll also be having a Zoom chat later on. So please hold that thought. You can still ask the questions uh, to our speakers in the Zoom chat. Thank you so much, everyone. And have a lovely day. So moving on, we'll be moving on next to community announcements. So if you have any announcement to share, please post in the chat and um, we'll kick off our community announcements with Vanessa, partner at C-Labs. Welcome to the stage, Vanessa. Great. Um, I just have a quick announcement. So as Tim mentioned, we have a hard for it coming <laughs> at one of these, one of the technology variety. Um, and we love food, food is how people connect. Um, and so as you may remember, we had Alpha Horus, then we had Baklava, then we had Solo Mainnet, and now we have D. Um, and so we want your ideas for sweet foodie D names. Um, so please put them in the chat and we'll do a Twitter vote next week. Um, so, what do you got? D, D foods around the world. Give us your ideas. Okay, thanks. Bye. Next, we'll hand it over to Rachel Jacob from Cellar Camp. Welcome to the stage, Rachel. Hello, everyone. I'm excited to briefly introduce Solo Camp to you today and present some key dates to mark on your calendars. Solo Camp is a two month virtual acceleration and mentorship program and competition that's focused on helping startups and developers build sustainable businesses on Solo. Teams will have a chance to receive funding, win prizes amounting to 30,000 CUSD, mentorship from industry leaders business and technological guidance, and we'll have the opportunity to increase your network and join a vibrant community of entrepreneurs and developers who share in Cello's vision of creating a more prosperous world. So some key dates to note are, um, we are presently in the pre-camp phase, which is our open application stage and also open events. Not on this uh, um, slide is we do have a great event coming up next week on October 7, our Investors AMA. I'm going to post it in the chat momentarily, so please join us for that one. Our application yeah. deadline is next week on October 5th. Um, please uh, visit soulcamp.com and you can apply there. 
Oh, it is on the, <laughs> the investor Fire Fireside AMA is on the slide. Thank you. Um, and our camp finalists wow. will be announced on October 13. So camp will run from October 19th through December 10. Uh, tune in for our idea fair, which is our demo day on December 8th, where our teams will be pitching to uh, the fellow community of mentors and investors, and our winners will be announced on December 15. I'm just going to post that in the chat right now. And uh, we welcome you all to uh, join us along the solo camp journey and look forward to receiving your applications today. I'm going to pass the mic to Sochi. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Hi, everyone. Um, I am excited to talk to you today about the Solo Foundation Grant Program. Over the past two waves, the foundation received applications from 175 teams from over 50 countries and has awarded 1.8 million in value to entrepreneurs committed to furthering Cello's mission of building an open financial system. We're excited to announce wave three of the foundation grant program. The wave three call for proposal highlights priorities across three areas. The first category that you see here is the technical and research grants. Examples of this include DeFi tooling, CUSD integration, and much more. Uh, the second category is ecosystem support and um, examples of this include lowering barriers to access, new use cases such as local economies. And the third category is education and community, where we're interested in building a decentralized creator community. So applications are now open. Um, please submit your application by November 6th. We will be holding interviews from November 16th through 20th and announce the awards on December 14th. If you have any questions or if you have an idea that you'd like feedback on, please join the discussion on Discord. And now I'll turn it over to Tim. Hey everybody again. Um, so totally separate from the Cello Foundation Grants Program, Cello also has an on-chain community fund. So uh, you don't need to memorize this address, but every five seconds, uh, this address receives Epoch rewards and its balance now totals over 2 million Cello. And it's set to grow, I think, at a rate of over 3 million Cello. Um, so this is, I guess, a call to action to you, to everybody, to determine how you want to like, deploy the community fund. Um, you might choose to direct funding for like open source engineering contributions to the Cello protocol, um, or perhaps the tools, or, um, I mean, you know, it's up to you, it's the community's funds. So I guess like, C Labs' only recommendation really is that the first proposal is like a meta proposal to decide how the community wants to like distribute these funds and uh, to sort of set out a process and uh, you know just provide like documentation and instructions around like doing this um, for anybody who's like looking to, to tap into that fund. So yeah, I'm going to share a link in the chat, but um, this community fund is sitting there. It's like it's everybody's, so I just encourage you to use it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tim, for that. Wow, it's exciting times. It looks like we have a full lineup up until December, and we have a lot of things happening within the community. I think we lost Punza again. Um, thank you so much for our participation. But before we go, this is one last chance for us to donate to a cause of our choice. So please um, use the QR codes using the Valora wallet to donate to the Humanitarian Empowerment Fund, Start, Startup Stand, Crypto for Black Lives. Thank you. And please, um, you can also join us via Zoom. You can stick around and join us if you have any questions for our speakers. Um, I've posted the link in the chat. Also, Thank join you very much. Yes, go uh, ahead, Punza. Welcome back. No, sorry, sorry, man. I, I got cut off there for a while. Also, please, if you're not part of our Discord community, please do download Discord. 
and you will be amazed at the information that is there. There's so much that is available. There's chats of our communities, there's development, there's everything that is useful for you getting up to date or up to speed with what Silo is doing. Also, we would like to hear from you. If you can give us any comments about the Kuneko, the event, what would you like us to improve on? What would you like us to change for the next time? Other than that, it's been an awesome, awesome, awesome evening. Aliwa, back to you. Thank you so much, Pumza, and thank you so much, everyone, for participating. Enjoy the day and enjoy the music. I 